Hey everyone, Kevin here from River City Graphics. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make animated GIFs within Adobe Photoshop. So, let's get started. Alright, so here in Photoshop, the first thing that we're going to do to get on our way of creating our animated GIF is just go up and create a new document. I'm going to make mine 1000 by 1000 and click OK. Then I'm going to go down to my shape tool and I'm just going to drag out a circle. Now, of course, you can take and make your animated GIFs uh, more complicated, but in order to just help you guys grasp the concepts in this video, I'm just going to keep it simple by animating a pulsing circle. So once I have that out on my um, stage here, I'm just going to take and go up to window and we're going to go down and look for timeline. So open up the timeline panel. Now you may have uh, recognized this from one of my past tutorials. I showed you guys how to edit video within Photoshop um, and we use this timeline panel by dragging video into Photoshop and it automatically popped up. Now when you first open it, um, if it's not already open, then you're probably going to see create video timeline as your option down here and this button. Now this isn't what we want. We don't want to create a video timeline. We want to create a frame timeline. So you're going to click this triangle here. Go down to create frame animation. And then click on create frame animation on this button. So that's going to open up the proper window for you to create your animated GIF. So I'm just going to um, put this to the bottom of our Photoshop window so that we can better utilize our space. So basically how this is going to work is we're going to affect the appearance of this circle uh, mainly through different layer styles and then um, it's going to take the keyframes that we make and it's going to um, generate frames in between those in order to create a smooth animation. So that'll make sense here. Um, what we're doing is we have our original circle and we need to create another circle that we want to um, have the animation end on. So I'm going to click this new um, basically frame button. It looks like the new layer button. So I'm just going to click that. You can see now we have a copy of our circle. So on here we want this to stay the same and we want to click on two and we want to change that in some way. So I'm just going to first delete the background and then I'm just going to go to my FX panel and it's off screen but I'm going down to color overlay. And so now I just want to make sure that this is the same as the first one. So I'm just going to select that blue and then we want to take from there and go to something lighter so that we can get it pulsing down to an almost white color. So it's kind of an off white bluish color. Click OK. So now I've basically just added a color overlay in order to adjust the color of that circle. You could also change the color of the circle, um, but I just wanted to add the effect. So now that we have that, you can see that we have uh, basically two options here. So we have the first one and we have the second one, and now we need to create frames in between this. And so the way that we can do that is by selecting both of them and clicking on this little um, circle line option right here down at the bottom. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to, um, if you're familiar with Flash, it's going to be kind of like a motion tween or a, a tween in general, or in After Effects, it automatically creates the in-between frames for your keyframes. So we'll just click on that and you'll see what this does exactly. So you can do selected layers or all layers. Um, I have selected these, so I'll just leave it on selected layers. And you can change the parameters of what you want it to actually um, animate and we want it, we'll just leave it on position, opacity and effects. So the thing that you really need to adjust is up here in frames to add. Um, depending on how long you want your animation to last will depend on what this number is. A general animation is about 24 frames per second. That's what like normal video is, sometimes 30, sometimes 60 if it's slow motion video. Um, but in general it's around 24. So if we wanted this animation to last for one second, we would make it 24, except that we already have two frames, so we would make it 22. Um, so I know that that's a little bit long for this animation, so I want to make mine half a second, which would be 12 frames, and since we already have two, then it would be 10. So I'm just going to click OK, and you're going to see it generate some frames down here. So now basically what it's done is create the frames in between this first frame and the last frame that we had originally made, and so now we get a nice transition between there. So if we click the play button, you can see that it's now fading from one to the other. So that's pretty cool. So now one more thing that we can do here, um, actually we have a couple things left to do. One is to make sure that this repeats because in general animated GIFs that you see online um, don't just play once, um, they usually repeat. So we'll take and change this from once to repeat by turning this to forever from once down here at the bottom of the panel. And you can also set it to three times or you can set it to other and you can specify a number of times for it to repeat. So I'm just going to align that back to the bottom. One more thing that we can do is 
you can set a time um, that you want this to actually delay. So you can put a delay on any one of these frames. So if we play it right now, you'll see that we kind of have a, a blinking effect, which we're going to um, smooth that out in just a minute. But let's say that we wanted it to stop for a second at the very end before it started playing the next um, set of the animation. So what we can do is take, and this is again slightly off screen, so I'm just going to take and click on our 12th frame right here where it says zero seconds, there's a triangle. I'm going to go down to one second. So now it's going to wait for one second once it gets to the very end before it actually plays again. So you can see now it waits one second, plays again. Waits, plays again. So you can use that delay um, to help you with your animations. So I had mentioned that when we play through this, you can see it kind of looks like it flashes. Now that's because it's going from dark blue or it's kind of a light blue to almost white and then it's going straight back to blue and what we need is an animation from the first frame to the 12th frame and then from the 12th frame to the first frame so what I'm going to do is just create a new keyframe here on 13 I'm just going to turn off the color overlay so now we've got our two frames here so I'm just going to select those and then do a tween like we did before frames to add at 10 click OK and so now we should have 23 frames with an even animation so you can see now we have a nice pulsing effect. Um, it's definitely smoothed out that animation so we don't have it being um, jumpy and going from no color to brighter color. So um, sometimes when you do that, you'll see that in the very middle, um, around like frame 13, you might actually have to delete a frame because there'll be like a really bright flash for some reason, um, just because the that frame will be the brightest. Um, so in this case, we don't have that, but I just wanted to let you know that you might actually have to delete one of your frames possibly in the middle or at the end, um, depending on your timing. All right, so um, this gives us a pretty good little animation here. You might be wondering what you would actually use this for. Um, I've seen a lot of these, like, in general, the pulsing circles used in, say, web applications like jQuery applications where, um, say, you have a map and you want to mark, say, a city on a map and so you put the little circle next to the city and people can come and they're like oh hey this thing is pulsing this must mean I should click it and so they click on it and then it opens up some information about that so um, that's kind of like a tactical use of um, animated GIFs but I mean you can see all the memes and stuff that they have online um, that you can actually create animated GIFs for so um, there's many different uses for GIFs so um, I'll let you explore that on your own so the last thing that we need to do is actually save this out so I'm going to go to file save for web. It's going to bring up our dialog box. I'll switch over to original and make sure that you have GIF selected over here in your uh, drop down. Once you have that you can have it on um, 256 colors so that way we get a good color resolution. Make sure transparency is turned on so that whatever is behind it um, won't actually show and or will actually show so you don't have a white border around your object. Um, you can adjust your image size and such, um, but mainly you want to also change this looping option so you can change it from once to forever. Um, just make sure that that stays on forever so that it continuously loops through. So then you click save. I have a folder called GIF or GIF on my uh, desktop. And we'll click and save it in there. All right, so now we can open this up can open it. It's going to open in the browser because that's where it'll default to to open up animated GIFs. And you can see that we have a nice pulsing circle there. Now you can adjust your timing depending on um, what it actually shows up in as your final. And um, there you go. Now you can use that in your applications. Probably scaled down. Um, you'll probably make a smaller one, but just so you guys can see it, I made it nice and big. So I hope you guys learned something in this tutorial. I uh, hope you have fun creating your animated GIFs. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment. I do have a new video coming out every week. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.